And new tonight on the crisis unfolding in Venezuela. A leaked State Department email confirmed by our Fox News team. Our military did, in fact, drop 200 tons of humanitarian aid into Colombia last week, all in the hopes that food and medical supplies will get inside Venezuela, despite the socialist dictator Nicolas Maduro's current blockade on the borders. Let's talk through it here with more retired Major General Bob Scales. Bob, you know, we were talking about humanitarian aid this week. And yes, it's nice to try to get it there, but if you can't get it inside the borders, what's the point? Well, that's a great question, Susan, and it really shows the subtlety of this strategy. Of course, you need the aid to, uh, to uh, relieve the suffering of the Venezuelan people, but the aid in many ways is also a weapon. First of all, the idea that Venezuelan opposition will be the ones that deliver aid to the border of those three crossing points reinforces to the international community and to the Venezuelans that the real power rests with the opposition, not with Maduro. Secondly, and I think equally important, by delivering the aid to the border, it's an opportunity to smoke out the military. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine those young privates standing on the border whose relatives are starving and they have to be the ones possibly to shoot their own countrymen to prevent aid? from coming into the country. And here's the third thing. It's a subtle way of telling other countries in the region, like Brazil and Colombia, that the United States is going to approach this problem with soft, not hard power. Remember, just about 30 years ago, uh, we jumped in, we put paratroopers uh, into Panama to, uh, to get rid of that evil regime. Now we're using soft power, humanitarian aid, and sanctions to push Maduro out rather than that, direct but military does that work, force. General, I mean, soft power containment, we've done this before. Uh, uh, is that really as powerful and as effective as yeah, the strong hand? Susan, that's a great question. If you'd asked me that question two weeks ago, I would say yes. Now I'm not too sure. Look, Maduro would have been out months ago if it weren't for the Cubans. The Cubans are doing for Maduro what the Russians did for Assad. The idea is to embarrass the United States by keeping uh, dictators in power and pushing back against American, uh, American influence. I think at the end of the day, the United States needs, to your point, a plan B. What that plan is right now, yeah. frankly, nobody knows. Okay, well, let's uh, change topics, and we have General Scales. You know, General Scales, we've been talking about uh, President Trump's fiery uh, press conference this morning. And one thing that came up, which was actually kind of surprising, I think it was breaking news for a lot of folks, that the president hinting that President Obama might have gone to war with North Korea. I mean, literally, he said that you yeah. know, they, they were very close to going to war. Does that surprise you at all? No, not at all. Look, I'm a... I'm a military historian and a strategist. I've, I've studied wars throughout my life. Most wars are started because of miscommunic miscommunication and hubris. Most wars are really started by accident. And wars start when tensions rise to a point when people are no longer able to talk to each other. Now, I'm not saying that Obama would have started a war uh, or Kim would have started a war against the United States. But any time you raise tensions, it leads to misunderstandings and it leads to strategic errors. Yeah. And what this administration do has done, I think very well, is simply tone down the rhetoric right. and reduce the pressure. And that moves us farther and farther away from a conflict. Okay, well, General, thank you so much. Good to oh, see you. Oh, my pleasure, Susan.